Harrier has quickly gone from one of my least favorite classes to my most played class in just a matter of days. Let's take a look at how best to use it, break open a lot of secret interactions that really make the character come alive, and learn how to be as effective as possible. Let's get started. As always when watching a frothy guide, we're taking a long, hard, and deep look at everything this character has to offer from the ground up. We're going to a level of depth and absurdity that you absolutely don't need for any reason other than because I think it's fun to go to that level. First, we're going to cover the basics of your primary weapon, the shot croc, and every other part of your kit. Second, we'll be getting into a long segment on mobility and how to maximize it as a Harrier player. Finally, we're going to discuss some basic strategies and positioning to help you perform better with Harrier. Let's start with your weapon. The Shock Croc, analogous to the quintessential lightning gun of arena shooters past, is easy to use but obscenely difficult to master. Dealing 18 damage per tick at close range and 6 damage per tick at long range, you've got quite the delta in possible damage values. When factoring in headshots, you're looking at a 50% damage increase, 27 damage per tick at close range, and 9 damage per tick at long range. Harrier's alternate fire, Laser Tag, is a projectile-based attack which you must lead, and it deals 50 damage on a hit. Once it does hit, it applies a 35% damage weakness to your target, which means that you can also express this as multiplying all damage that target takes by 1.35. The enemy hit by this will take 35% more damage. No other way I could say that. This means that a weakened target receiving headshots at close ranges takes a maximum of 36 damage or 24 damage from body shots at close range. Now, none of these numbers matter unless we understand how laser weapons work in video games. So, I'm sure you noticed my air quotes around tick, or rather emphasis on the word tick just a minute ago. This weapon doesn't necessarily fire bullets per se, so it's a misrepresentation to say you're dealing 18 damage per shot or per bullet. What you will notice, however, is that this weapon deals damage at regular intervals. It's not reliant on you holding the beam on an enemy for some given period of time before the damage is dealt. If you fire the laser for a single frame, you will deal the full tick of damage. So what does this mean, and why am I bothering to explain it to you? Well, lasers are a nearly impossible thing to appropriately model in a video game, especially in an online shooter where lag and a 60Hz tick rate in-game must be abided by. In real life, a laser's cutting or damaging ability to matter can be measured on a scale much smaller than milliseconds of exposure, but video games don't have that luxury. Some concessions have to be made, and by looking at both the data presented here and at the way other laser weapons have functioned in other video games, we realize that in actuality, the shot croc behaves identically to your standard bullet-based weapon. On a fundamental level, there's no difference at all in how this weapon deals and calculates damage when compared to the aerator assault rifle or the Omega pistol. It's got discrete damage values at particular ranges, and damage ticks at regular intervals. This thing might as well fire bullets and have a standard rate of fire like a traditional weapon, and we can determine that to be about 10 ticks per second or 600 rounds per minute. With no misses and all close range body shots, you're looking at 180 damage per second. Obviously this is almost never going to reliably be the case because perfect accuracy and distance are not reliable factors with this weapon. Your mobility is great and closing the gap is not hard, sure, but so much skill is required in never missing, and your damage drops off so aggressively that it honestly feels very unpredictable just how much damage you can do to a given target. There's a few main rules to always remember with the shot croc to maximize your effectiveness. First, always remember to use your laser tag alternate fire as often as possible and try to lead off engagements with it. Second, try to stay as close to your enemies as you comfortably can because the difference in your damage output based on range is huge. There is a massive and very aggressive damage drop off on this weapon, so proximity is your friend. I'll get into a little bit more detail about engagement ranges and how to approach fights towards the end of the guide, but if your goal is to straight up kill people as fast as possible, then these couple of tips are going to help you do that more easily. If you've got good aim, and you can get good at mastering Harrier's fast, wavy movement, the Shot Croc is truly a sight to behold at all ranges. While its damage is usually matched or beaten by other damage-focused classes, Harrier's mobility, team support, and self-sufficiency more than make up for that. 
Let's actually move on to Harrier's key ability next, because I want to cover all of the class's offensive options first. After a short windup and a loud callout audible to both teams, Harrier unleashes Convergence, a laser beam dealing 40 damage per tick at the same 600 rounds per minute as the Shock Croc. There isn't any damage drop off to speak of with this ability, meaning that you're always going to deal the full damage as long as you score a hit. The awkward part of this ability is that you can no longer move forward and backwards while using it. These controls are relegated instead to up and down. However, what you can do is move your aim 90 degrees away from wherever you're trying to actually go and then start strafing in that direction. So if you want to go off, you know, straight ahead, you can turn to the right 90 degrees then start strafing left and you're going to move in that direction. So it's really great for popping this ability inside of a hallway or behind some piece of cover and then strafing your way out to get into position and then flicking your aim back onto your target. Obviously, this is going to be a little bit better on a mouse because you get that quick flicking motion of your aim, which is not possible on a controller, but it still is going to work just fine regardless of your input method. As a general rule of thumb, without cutting too much into our discussion on play style and positioning, I feel that Harrier should be played as a flanker in a lot of situations. Go for scrappy fights off on the side of the map, be selfish with your health packs, only commit to one versus one fights that you know you can win and escape from safely, and when your convergence is ready, you can oftentimes pop it from behind the enemy team's front line and force them into an unwinnable situation on an otherwise contested objective. So, speaking of Harrier's Supercharger Health Pack, let's go ahead and break this ability down. Upon tossing it out, it's gonna stick to any surface. Floors, walls, ceilings, objects, pretty much anything that's not an actual player. Upon picking this pack up, you're gonna regain up to 100 health over the course of just a few seconds, and your fuel meter is filled completely and instantly. Your Supercharger has no time limit, it's never gonna expire based upon time, but it does have a limit of four health packs before it breaks. You may only have one Supercharger placed at any time, so placing a new one will immediately delete your old one. One great strategy if you're low on health is to pick up a health pack from a Supercharger that you've already placed, and then immediately place a new Supercharger to pick up a second health pack instantaneously. You're gonna heal 200 health, and the rate at which you gain that health effectively doubles since you're being healed from those two sources simultaneously. My biggest suggestion with the supercharger is to not hold on to it for too long. Be selfish with it and use it for fuel more than you use it for health. I found a lot of success when I started playing this way, and my consistency with the character has skyrocketed. I think you should focus on this for a while until you get really comfortable with the character, then you can start giving it to teammates a little bit more regularly. Unfortunately, when playing Harrier, you can't see your teammates' health bars anyways, so unless you're on voice comms or you have actually seen your teammates take damage, you have no consistent and reliable way of knowing how much health they have, and whether or not you need to break off from what you're doing to give them a health pack and to make sure they stay alive. It's not like you're playing the Battle Medic, where you know exactly how well your teammates are doing at all times. Harrier just doesn't know, so... It's hard to want to commit to that playstyle if you're not given the information that you need to commit to it. It's also really important to constantly be dropping that supercharger mid-flight to refuel and keep yourself topped off. Oftentimes, it's going to be on whatever random wall is nearest to you at a given moment. You're going to see this strategy pervade all the clips that I'm showing you today. My number one goal with this class is to keep my fuel topped off as much as humanly possible. The healing is great for sure, and you're going to use it for that 90% of the time, but that fuel is intensely important as well. You may not feel like you need fuel, but trust me, if it's off cooldown and you're ready to go with that thing, just drop it, fuel up, even if it's like just 10% of your bar you're fueling, whatever, just do it, because eventually you're going to get into situations where that 10% is going to actually matter. You might as well be using those cooldowns and giving yourself as much of an advantage as you possibly can, because I know it sounds like nothing right now, but 10% of your fuel meter does make a giant difference down the road once you get really good with the class, and you're going to see why once we talk about the rest of this character's abilities, so just keep it in mind. Let's move on to your melee attack, especially powerful thanks to Harrier's Raycaster Laser Boots. Named Blastback, this ability sits on top of the standard melee. 
Your standard melee deals 75 damage, and your blast back deals an additional 60 on top of it, out to a much longer range than the regular melee possibly could. It's very possible for you to hit somebody with only the blast back portion of the melee outside of the range of your normal melee as illustrated here. Let's run some numbers. If you hit your opponent with laser tag right before meleeing, you're going to deal 50 damage plus 135 damage times 1.35 which comes out to about 232 damage. That is a heck of a lot of damage, and is almost assuredly going to kill most damage targets outright. Not only is this ability incredibly damaging, it also provides a sizable impulse in the direction opposite of where you kicked. This can be quite detrimental in certain scenarios, and it's very possible you're going to blast yourself over an edge to your death if you use it in the wrong place at the wrong time. However, you can turn this backwards impulse into a huge benefit if you use it correctly, and this is kind of difficult to do. This technique that I'm about to show was the big kicker for me in liking this class, no pun intended. This is the one thing that changed Harrier from being meh to amazing. The idea is really simple. Look where you want to go, then do a quick 180 and melee. You're going to propel yourself very quickly, and in 0G, if you do two or three of these back-to-back, -back, you're going to reach pretty monstrous speeds. Here's the main uses of this technique. First, you want to use it regularly to maintain a lot of velocity in 0G. It's really easy to get caught in the trap of slowly floating around, where you're easy prey and you're sure to die quickly to enemy gunslingers without dealing any appreciable damage at all. However, when you mix in melees in all sorts of directions while you're using your Raycasters liberally to move around, you're much faster, you're much harder to shoot, and you can get way closer to your enemies to deal increased damage per second. As I'm sure you've already seen in the clips in this video, this is a staple of my gameplay, and it's the one thing that allows me to play the flanking role effectively and outmatch my opponents in oftentimes unfair fights in my favor. The other main use is to allow you to traverse interiors very quickly. It's hard to space these kicks out properly, but with practice, you can navigate labyrinthine hallways with wraith-like speed. And be warned, it's very taxing on your resources and it's easy to mess up and requires you to be skilled AF to use the marketing term. It's so, be careful. It is something that you can be very good, but takes a lot of practice. Now, when using your kicks in this way, you're going to notice that your jump button is disabled for a long period of time after that melee button is pressed. However, your raycasters are usable instantaneously, so make sure you're flipping that ability on immediately after kicking so you don't lose all your momentum randomly because you're just unable to bunny hop or something stupid like that. In summary, your blast back melee attack is an extremely powerful and versatile tool, and very often when you're flying through 0G at a million miles per hour, you can smack somebody clear in the face out of nowhere with it and deal a lot of damage while pushing them way out of position, securing some really nutty kills for your team without even breaking stride. Get comfortable with this ability, especially the range of the back blast portion, and you're going to see your Harrier play rise from average to great very, very quickly. I do, however, have two major complaints about this ability that I would love to see Boss Key address in the future, one of which I think is very possible, and the other I think is likely never to happen. First, the easy one. The startup time on the blast back melee feels much longer than standard melee. This means that the attack has a bit of lag to it because of that longer animation. This in and of itself is not a problem whatsoever. It's okay that there's a longer wind-up period for a powerful melee attack, fine. My complaint lies in the fact that your ability to aim is locked out during this animation. You can't activate the melee, then make a final adjustment to aim before the melee connects with a target. While this is true of all melee attacks, it feels much worse with backblast to the point that I feel the attack teeters on the edge of being too difficult to hit with consistently. Your aim is just locked out for too long of a period of time. You have to almost lead your melee attack. You have to predict it almost like you're shooting a slow moving projectile as opposed to hitting them with that instant boot kick. If this aim lockout must occur, I'd love to see that lockout occur later in the animation so I could make those final adjustments to my aim before striking. All that I'm looking for here is a consistent duration and starting point for that aiming lockout segment of the actual melee attack. 
I know it's kind of hard to explain, but hopefully any of the programmers over at Boss Key can understand what I'm trying to say, because it just feels kind of bad on Harrier's front, and I think that it hurts the character in a way that is kind of not fair. Second, I do have one much harder complaint, and the only reason I bring this up in the guide is because it has a marked impact on how console players and how controller players are going to learn from this guide and learn Harrier and become good Harrier players, because they're going to have difficulties doing this major movement mechanic of using the blast back melee attack to move around, and here's why. The melee movement technique is just hard for them, because they can't do that 180 very quickly. To use Titan as a comparison, at least you can use the backfire mechanic to perform rocket jumping. Normally on PC, most PC players will flick their mouse aim behind them to do the rocket jumps, but console players cannot comfortably do that, so they have to rely on backfire. What's unfortunate about this class, the Harrier, is that you simply cannot do that 180 turn consistently in the middle of fights and have it actually be useful, have it actually be important uh, and you just stay alive long enough to make it matter you're gonna die and get killed trying to wait for your aim to slowly turn back behind you kick and then slowly turn back forwards and track the guy that you're trying to shoot you cannot make those quick snappy adjustments it's not a dig at controller players it's just like their input method does not allow them to play the character in the way that it inevitably is going to be played at a high level on a mouse is that wrong? Is that bad? Is that something that needs to be addressed within the game? I'm really not sure, but I can say that I feel sorry for controller players in this scenario. It's going to be a really big headache for them trying to use this technique and trying to maximize their Harrier play. The Harrier may see markedly less play and markedly less high skill play on consoles because of this one simple shortcoming. This melee attack mobility boost is absolutely defining of the character. Whether or not it was quote unquote intended or predicted by the developers as being the way Harrier moves around, in practice, in this divergent metagame, this is the way Harrier is supposed to be moving. And if console players cannot do that effectively, I do hope that Boss Key can find some way to make that more usable for controller players. Moving on from that tangent, let's go ahead and cover Harrier's Raycasters next. This section is going to segue us nicely into the rest of my movement suggestions, and then finally the positioning and decision making advice. The Raycasters are your primary movement ability, allowing you to float through the world on your terms. In general, you don't want to hold this ability button down. It's usually better to feather it on and off to both conserve fuel and to maximize your velocity. Imagine yourself essentially forming the pattern of a sine wave throughout the air. That is what you're going for. It's worth noting here that there's nearly no latent period on the recharge of Harrier's fuel. As soon as you stop firing the Raycasters, your fuel will start recharging pretty much instantly. It's also important to realize that your lasers that leave your boots when firing this Raycasters ability, which by the way, if you didn't know, you're shooting lasers out of your boots to project yourself. That's how this character works, but anyways... The lasers that you're firing are going to fire perpendicularly to where your aim is pointed. Meaning that if your aim is above or below the horizon, it's going to change how those raycasters influence your momentum. Generally, I recommend aiming slightly below the horizon since it seems to help you move forward just a little bit faster. Otherwise, this ability is pretty simple and straightforward. Just remember that... If you're ever in a fight in 0G where an enemy is really high above you, don't fire your Raycasters because you're going to be blasting yourself away from them, oftentimes out of 0G and to your inevitable demise on maps like Trench. I've done this a lot of times and I was really confused why it happened until I went into private match and I really tested this out and realized, oh crap, I wasn't blasting myself up. I was blasting myself backwards. So be careful with these Raycasters in that particular scenario. Now, do you remember a few minutes ago when I talked about that blast back melee attack and how you can use your Raycasters immediately after using that melee attack? Well, it's possible to cancel your recovery frames from that melee attack into your backwards Raycaster Ray. Your backwards Raycaster Ray deals 18 damage per tick at that same 600 rounds per minute as the Shock Croc. The cool thing here is that the moment you fire that backwards Raycaster bolt, your melee animation is entirely cancelled, and you can instantly bring your Shot Croc up and start firing that weapon once again. 
Whether this remains in the game a few months down the road or gets patched out remains to be seen because this may be identified as a bug, but it's a hyper-important minutia that any self-respecting Harrier main simply must learn. Now, do you remember that combo earlier of laser tag into an instant melee for 232 damage? Well, if you cancel the melee of that combo into your raycasters and then start shooting your weapon instantly, you're looking at a combo of well over 300 damage in a very short span of time, allowing you to chew through anyone if you can land that full combo. Even if you don't land the full combo, canceling that melee animation is critical to finishing off targets weakened by, but not killed by, your initial attack. Practice this combo in training mode, and try your best to get used to the motion. It's still not even second nature for me yet. I've still got to manually perform and think about this technique every time that I play Harrier, so really focus on giving this one lots of time to add it to your bag of tricks. If I haven't mastered it yet, then it's probably not going to be a quick process for you guys either. It's going to take a few hours, a few days, maybe even a week to really get comfortable with doing this and have it be just a regular part of your play. Just have it written and burned into your neurons so it just happens and you don't have to think about it. That's going to take time, but you'll get there. Like I mentioned early on, I feel this class plays best as a flanking role. While Wraith and Assassin want to play really close and straight up kill people, your general role is to be really scrappy and annoying with your constant self-healing, adding lots of damage, and hopefully getting picks if you can manage to catch people out of position. Standing on objectives generally tends to not be the best location for Harrier. In regular public games, I do feel that this character thrives the most on selfish play just like Assassin and Wraith. Whenever your convergence is ready to be used, flanking behind the enemy team and shooting them in the back with it is generally pretty effective. But really, I think you should just focus on trying to attack from awkward angles and try to focus on not activating the windup of the ability while out in the open. Try to pick corners and set up kill spots to mitigate the exposed nature of this key ability. Really, you only need one and a half to two kills with it to completely stop an enemy team's push, and being able to do that once every minute and a half has massive implications on the overall game state when done properly. When playing this scrappy, selfish, mid-range flanker style, I find it best to not commit to fights in one versus ones unless you're absolutely certain that you can win the fight. It's really easy to get in over your head and feed a death to the enemy team, giving them free reign all because you got too greedy. Keep it scrappy, but know when it's time to commit on a target and burn them down. Make very liberal use of your melee attack for mobility, and if you're ever in a fight that you know you're going to lose because you're floating through the air fruitlessly and slowly, don't try to out-aim them and win the one versus one Just go for that kick, drop a heal station, just get yourself out of there as quickly as you possibly can. Try to get away from the situation. You're almost never going to beat a gunslinger in Zero-G unless you get the drop on them, so be willing to pick your battles and things are going to go your way much more often. Your focus in most situations is going to be to help your friendly hit scan to control the middle of the map, but not take control of it yourself. Gunslinger and Enforcer are going to be your primary fraggers in a lot of situations, and your job is to assist them in burning down targets and making it as hard as possible for the enemy team to establish any sort of foothold. You are not the primary DPS, you are an adjunct, and you're going to find the most success when you play as such and you accept your role. However, if you're playing against massively weaker players like I am in some of these 10 plus kill streak clips, then sure, go ham if nobody can stop you from doing what you're doing, but in closer matches, you've got to balance a razor thin line between being too careful and too aggressive, but if you can pull it off, Harrier will absolutely torch the competition. And with that, guys, that'll just about do it for the Harrier Guide. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope that you've learned something new. If you've got any questions or comments about the guide, please leave them down below, and I'll do my best to help you out if I catch your question. If you want to see more guide content like this, please consider supporting me on Patreon. It takes a heck of a lot of time for me to put something like this together, and with YouTube ad revenue being the way it is in the past few months, and frankly, Lawbreakers videos not getting anywhere near as many views as my Titanfall videos, my Titanfall guides. It's really hard for me to make up for the time I spend creating these gigantic guides. So if you guys want to support me and just help me out, 
Patreon is the best way to do that. Alternatively, if you don't want to support on Patreon, if you have Amazon Prime and you don't know what Twitch Prime is, I suggest you give Twitch Prime a quick Google. Sign up for Twitch Prime, costs you no extra money. You can subscribe to me for Twitch on free. You get plenty of emotes. You give me a couple of bucks every month that you manually do it for free. So it's a great way to help support what I'm doing here. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and I will see you in the next guide. Take care.